Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're going to learn how to express our solutions to linear systems in parametric vector form. So our main goals are to learn how to represent our solutions in parametric vector form, and then also to understand the graphical representation of our solutions. We'll start by looking at an example from a previous video. In the past, we've learned how to solve these homogeneous systems. And remember, this homogeneous system is the same thing as this homogeneous matrix equation, where a solution is this vector x, and in this case that vector would be some x1, some x2, and some x3 that satisfy all three of these equations. Now we know that to solve this system, one thing we could do is write out the augmented matrix, which looks like 1, 2, negative 3, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, and negative 1, 1, negative 3, 0. And so we would simply do row reduction on this augmented matrix to find our solutions. So to do this row reduction, my first step is to take the second row and subtract two times the first row. The first row would remain unchanged, but the second row would become 0, negative 3, 6, and 0. I'm going to do two row operations at once here. My next row operation is going to be to take R3 and add R1. In that case, I would get 0, 3, negative 6, and 0. From here, my next row operation would be to take R3 plus R2. Once again, my first row would stay the same, and my second row would stay the same. My third row would become 0, 0, 0, 0. At this point, my matrix is an REF. And I've identified that the first two columns are pivot columns, but the third one is not. Since the system is homogeneous, I know that it is consistent. There are solutions. Specifically, there is the trivial solution. But now that I've identified that the third column is not a pivot column, I know there must exist free variables, which should tell me that there are also non-trivial solutions to this homogeneous equation. To find those solutions, I'm going to finish the row reduction to put in our REF my next row operation is going to be able to take negative one-third of R2. R3 will stay the same. R2 will become 0, 1, negative 2, 0. And my first row will also remain unchanged. My last step is to take R1 and subtract 2 times R2. Once again, the last row remains the same. My second row looks like this. My first row, I take row 1 minus 2 times row 2 will give me 1, 0, and then I'll have negative 3 minus 2 times negative 2. So that's minus 3 plus 4, should give me a positive 1. And so now I'm in RREF. From here I can go back to my equation forms, which should look like x1 plus x3 equals 0. My second row would tell me that x2 minus 2x3 equals 0. And I know that x3 is free. It's my free variable. Now first I'm going to go into the parametric description of the solution. All I'm going to do is solve for each one of those variables. So I'll have x1 is equal to a negative x3. I'll have x2 is equal to positive 2x3. And once again, x3 is free. So here we have the solutions to this homogeneous system. But as I said in the beginning, this is also the solution to the matrix equation, ax equals 0. And so my solution for that equation would be this vector x. And that's what I want to do now. I want to write my solution in terms of that vector x. That vector has components x1, x2, x3. But I know what those values are now. x1 is just equal to negative x3. x2 is equal to 2x3. And x3 is free which means I can just choose any value I want for x3. When I look at this vector that I have, I see that it has a common value of whatever that x3 value is. So I'm going to factor that x3 out. And now I have a solution that looks like this, where x3 can take on any value. And so what I see is my solution is really just some number times the vector negative 1, 2, 1. So whatever I choose for x3, that will identify a new possible solution to the system. 
Now here I've written in terms of that variable x3, but I can really treat that like a parameter. I just choose the value of x3 that I want and it gives me a different solution in the solution set. So whether I write it in this form, or I could write it like the book does, and say x is some constant times the vector in negative one, two, one, I see that I have all these solutions. And this is essentially writing our solution in parametric vector form. More generally, parametric vector form is when we write our solutions in the form x vector, our solution, is equal to some constant times some vector plus some other constant times some vector, where s and t are just constant real numbers. So once again, this means belongs to the set of all real numbers. And here we can see that the solution to my homogeneous system is in that form. It looks like some number times vector. So now that I have this form, I want to see what's the value in this form. And one of the key values is that we can really understand what these solutions look like graphically. So let's take a look at them graphically. If x, v, and u are all vectors in R3, so we're going to deal in uh, the third dimension here, that if our solution looks like some constant times some vector, then the solution is a line in R3. If, however, the solution looks like some constant times v plus some constant times u, then the solution is a plane in R3. And so how do we get these expressions here? Let's look at the first one. If we have an example, just like we did, where we had our solution to be some constants times a vector, for instance, negative 1, 2, 1, like we came up with, well, I could plot negative 1, 2, 1. That would be negative 1 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and 1 in the z direction. So I would follow that path and get a vector that looks like this. That would be one of the solutions to my system. But not just that solution, any multiple of that, that vector is also a solution. But when I multiply a vector, I'm just scaling that vector. So 2 times that vector would get me to here, 3 would get me to here, negative 1 would get me somewhere down here, so on and for, so forth. So what I can see is the solution set, the set of all possible solutions, are just all the vectors that lie on this line in R3. Now, what about the other case? If I have some constant times v plus some constant times u, how does that get me a plane? Well, once again, let's look at an example. If we look at the solution that is some constant times negative 1, 2, 1, but then there also might be another component, for instance, plus some other constant times the vector 0, 0, 1. If I have a solution like this, the first piece gives me all the solutions that I just found, all the vectors on this line. But to any one of those vectors, if I added some multiple of this vector, for instance, if I took 1 times negative 1, 2, 1, I would have this vector. And if I added 1 of the vector 0, 0, 1, that's 1 in the z direction, I would end up right here. But if I took 2 times the first vector, and 1 times the second vector, I would get to here. If I took 1 times the first vector and 2 times the second vector, I would get to here. And so as I gather all these points up, what I'm really getting is a plane. I can't get to all of the points in R3, but I can get to all of the points that are lying on this plane. Now there are other ways to come up with these same results. For instance, in this first case, S is my value that's free to, vary, free to vary. You could call that my independent variable in this case. And all the other values, the x1 and the x2, are really fully defined as soon as I choose S. So this turns out to be a linear equation of one independent variable. If you had some background in equations, a linear equation of one independent variable is a line. That's another way I can think of this solution being a line. Now in the second example, I really have two parameters that I can adjust, two independent variables. And a linear equation of two independent variables gives me a plane. So that's another way we can see that. And there's one other way we can visualize these solutions as well. If I clean up my picture just a little bit and think of that first solution, my example was I had a solution that looked like some constant times negative 1, 2, 1. We saw that that was a solution to the following system. 
we had this system that was x1 plus 2x2 minus 3x3 equals 0. 2x1 plus x2 equals 0. And the third equation was negative x1 plus x2 minus 3x3 equals 0. And our vector, negative 1, 2, 1, any multiples, was going to be a solution to this system. But what this system is, is really three different equations of planes. And our solution represents the intersection of all these planes. So let's take a look at these planes. If I'm in Mathematica, and this is code that you don't have to know, I'm just going to go through this real quick to, to show these planes and see what this intersection is. But I can one way I can plot planes is using the command contour plot 3D. Now, what I have to do is I have to put in all the equations of my plane. Instead of using x1, x2, x3, I'm going to use x, y, and z. So my first equation was x plus 2y minus 3z equals 0. That was my first equation. My second equation was 2x plus y plus 0z zero equals 0. And my last equation was negative x plus y minus 3z equals 0. And then I should have to pick a range of values to plot this over. So I'm going to plot this from x goes from negative a to a. y and z will follow the same ranges. I'm going to zip to the beginning and define a to be some value of 5. So now I'm plotting it from x goes from negative 5 to 5, and same thing with y and z. And if I look at this plot, here's my plot, then I have my three planes plotted. And so as I look at that intersection, I can see that it really is a line. There's my intersection. It really is a line. Now, is it the line that's represented by my vector? Well, one way I might investigate that is by trying to plot that vector that was negative 1, 2, 1. Now, that might be a little tricky in mathematics, but not, not too bad. So what I want to do now is be able to plot an arrow. So I'm going to use graphics 3D, and I want to draw an arrow. And I want my arrow to go between two points. I want it to go from the point 0, 0, 0 over to the point negative 1, 2, 1. And what I'd like to do is show these two plots together. So I would like to show the first plot, comma, the second plot, and that should end my command. There, I've executed these two commands. Now it's a little hard to see if it actually did anything, whether it actually showed an arrow or not. So to better see if that arrow is really showing, I'm going to modify this a little bit. I'm going to make this graphics a special thickness of 0 0.04, just to make it a little thicker. I'll maybe add some color and make it red as well. So I'm just going to add those to my graphics command to see if I can make this arrow pop a little bit. And sure enough, I see my arrow now. So I can see my arrow really is lying right on the intersection of those three planes. And not just that arrow, it's not that one vector of negative 1, 2, 1. But if I looked at the vector two times that, sure enough, that one's still there as well. So I can see that intersection between these three planes is really just n the line that is some constant times the vector negative 1, 2, 1. And so that's the last way that I can see that that solution really is a line in R3. I can also see the power of that parametric vector form because it really describes what that solution is doing. And that concludes this instruction on parametric vector, vector form.